Hello one and all and welcome to the Archaeologist Lab, where for four days we discover a little more about the science, technology, engineering, and math that goes into being an archaeologist. You're here joining us on day one, which means we're talking about science. But before we get to the nitty-gritty of things, first let me introduce myself. My name is Meredith and I'm a librarian at the Cedar Rapids Public Library and I'm really glad you decided to join us for this camp this summer. Now, first thing first, do you know what an archaeologist is? Some of you might. I mean, there are a lot of kind of famous archaeologists that you can see in movies and television shows, reading about them in books. You might already have a good idea about what they do, but we're going to start with a very formal definition. Not because it means anything more or less, but let's try and get it straight from the start, shall we? Okay, so here we go. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, archaeology is the scientific study of material remains, such as tools, pottery, jewelry, stone, walls, and monuments of past human life and activities. It also is the remains of the culture of a people. That's a lot altogether, don't you think? But what I think is important is that it is a scientific study that deals with leftovers from people that help you figure out about their culture. So when I was introducing what an archeologist is, I mentioned you might know some fictional characters. You might know some people that are really archeologists working today. I think a lot of people think of Indiana Jones. Does that sound familiar? Some kind of exciting adventure to a land far away with a different, completely different kind of culture with these amazing treasures that people get to find when they're archaeologists. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, I think all the treasures that people get, or all the artifacts that people find, really are treasures because they tell a story. You can look around you and the stuff that's sitting around you tells a story. It tells one now and then from years to come, people will be making some educated guesses about what those artifacts mean about you and your people. Now, archeology span is a science, so I think we have to have a moment to discuss the scientific method. Please hold. Back to the dictionary, people. The definition of the scientific method is this. Principles and procedures for the systematic pursuit of knowledge involving the recognition and formulation of a problem, collection of data through observation and experiment, and the formulation of testing a hypothesis. <gasps> Which really means that you see a problem, you have a question, and then in a very systematic way, so in the same order, you find out how to collect information through observation, create an experiment in order to test your guess of why you think this problem is happening. So, this is what it really looks like. You have a question, so you do a little bit of research, and then you come up with a hypothesis, your best guess. So then, you have to create an experiment to test your hypothesis. Something happens in your experiment. You have to analyze that data, and then you come up with a conclusion. Your best guess based on your experiment to see if your hypothesis was correct or not. Now, the best part, I think, about the scientific method is that it's the same steps over and over, but the beauty of it is that even if your hypothesis is wrong, it's totally okay. Because if you know it's wrong, then you know it's wrong. You figured something out. It's remarkable. I would go with the scientific method every time if I were you. All right, children, enough with the jibber jabber. Let's get to it, right? All of you should have a little paper bag with a label that says day one on it. And according to my records in that bag, go ahead, open it up if you haven't already. What are we waiting for? You should have a ruler, check, ruler, okay, good. A paintbrush, got your paintbrush, okay. Colored pencils, 
should be a nice big pack. Regular pencils, very important for taking notes, and your very own notebook, which I like to call your field notes, right? So sometimes if an archeologist or many other kinds of scientists go out into the field, it means they're not in a laboratory. They could be you know, out in a meadow. They could be, um, they really could be at a burial site or a temple deep in the forest, even like a, just not a forest in the rainforest. When you're in the field, you're not in a laboratory and you're going to need to take good notes because one of the most important things about being an archeologist or really any scientist is being able to not only make observations, but record your observations, okay? So make sure you got everything in your bag. Ready? Here we go. Go ahead and open your notebook and write your name on the first page. And feel free to doodle along as I explain a little bit more about archeology. span Now, one of the most important things I think about day one in this camp is that you see yourself as an archeologist, right? So the Society of American Archeologists have this drawing available online. And it is what a stereotypical archaeologist might look like. And so when I say a stereotypical archaeologist, stuff like big wild crazy eyes, crazy hair, um, artifacts hanging off of a pole. I do believe there is a shrunken head of some sort, right, on a walking stick, an arrow through his hat, a pith helmet. You know, it's like cargo shorts, cargo shorts. This is what an archaeologist looks like. But you know what? Archaeologists can wear big yellow earrings and citrus fruit t-shirts, like me. Look at yourself. You're an archaeologist already. It's true. You have a bag. You have a kit. You've been informed about the scientific method. It's really important that you see yourself as an archaeologist. It's true. Let me show you a couple examples of how you could be an archaeologist, not just in this camp, but how you could practice archaeology in and around I don't know, Lynn County, it's possible. All right, so I may be exaggerating just a little. To become an archeologist, most people do need to go to school for it, and it usually takes about four years. You do need a lot of training on the scientific method and different kinds of cultures and different methods for excavating and how you know how the dirt's composed. There are so many things, but I want you to see that even these small people right here, my kids, can make some really cool observations. So my parents live on a farm near the Cedar River and my dad took us down to the timber last year. It was in April, so it's been just over a year. And he showed us where there are earthworks or burial mounds where Native Americans have buried their people in the timber. And you can, if you are observing, and my kids were able to see it, and I drew it in pink on the picture there, you can see where those raised mounds are. And my folks have been really lucky and have had um, a couple different agencies, part of the government or different schools come out, and they have recorded where they are and what they have found and kind of keep tabs on it down there so that things don't get disturbed and they can monitor any changes like if erosion happens and things like that. Now, that's just one example of how archeologists can work, what their jobs and roles could be. Sometimes archeologists work for the state of Iowa, for instance, or they might work for a university and teach people learning about archeology. span Now, these folks, they really didn't have to dig anything up when they came to visit my parents' farm, but they brought their tools nonetheless because you never know what you're going to find. You'll see here that a toolkit for an archeologist looks kind of like a builder and kind of like a painter. There are all sorts of things that archeologists use to kind of, uh, what's the word, unearth artifacts that might be buried. I mean. Honestly, they can use equipment as heavy as a backhoe to scoop up dirt and material to get down low enough where they can see 
um, a record of human life that's been covered over by either ash from a volcano or mud from a mudslide or just years and years of the earth shifting. So that's one thing that they could use, but also something as tiny and delicate as a paintbrush. Now, as different as the tools are, there are probably as many different jobs you can have as an archaeologist. Now, here's an example. This gentleman's name is Keenan Holmes, and he has this great job, I think. He works with young people. He's a youth associate, assistant, curator, archaeologist. There are lots of different ways you could say his position and title, I suppose. But what he does is he gets to spend some of his time in a laboratory doing research, but then he gets to share what he finds with visitors to the museum that he works at. He can talk about all the things that he knows from his firsthand experience and answer questions in real time. So he gets to directly share his research with, I mean, everyday people like you and me. It's pretty great. Now, this video that you're watching will also be on the Cedar Rapids Public Library's YouTube page. And on the YouTube video in the, in the description section, there's a link to this video if you want to go and see and hear Mr. Holmes talk about what he gets to do every day. And now, it's time for project time, people. That's right. Get your notebook, find a clean page, and I want you to start drawing yourself as an archaeologist. So as you draw yourself as an archaeologist, certainly consider some of the tools you might have on hand for going out into the field, you know, some of the things you need to make your observations, record your observations, and very delicately access those artifacts. And now artifacts, they're things that people leave behind, a record. So it could be a bottle cap or beads from a necklace. After you've drawn yourself as an archaeologist, go around your house and start observing the things that are in your house, your room, your kitchen, that are unique to you and your family. What makes your artifacts different than artifacts in somebody else's life. Take your field notes, and if you have a camera, you can take a camera to take pictures. Use your ruler, measure things, and start to make a list of things that are uniquely you. I'll tell you what, that's gonna take you probably a good amount of the day. Start your inventory of your personal artifacts We'll get back together for the next installment of Archaeologist Lab, and we'll talk about technology. So keep in mind for next time what the scientific method is and artifacts.